To some observers of Canada's tech sector, the stars seem to be aligning as Justin Trudeau and his Liberal government eagerly push to brand the country as an innovation hub. The latest move, the introduction of fast-track visas for foreign tech workers earlier this week. But Canadian tech can't shake its past. Think Nortel, think BlackBerry. Both of them continue to haunt the sector. Bloomberg's Garrett DeVink joins us to discuss. Garrett, great to have you here. So let's start with the question everyone is wondering about after having read your story. Mm -hmm. Are we at an inflection point now? Yeah, I think it's definitely something that you can say and something that a lot of people in the industry are saying. We sort of had the last few years of building up all this mo momentum in Canada. Obviously, it's a very exciting time to be in tech anywhere in the world, but in Canada in particular because there's just so much attention going on and there is so much real growth. There's really tangible increase in investment capital doubling in the, the last four years alone in Canada. And so we're at this point now where a lot of these things that people have been asking for for years, more venture capital, more support from government, more attention from just regular people and the press is there. Now it's sort of like what comes next. So what's the grade people are giving the Trudeau government when it comes to fostering innovation? In terms of the startup community and sort of the fast growing tech community, I think they would probably give them an A, right? I mean, they all, uh, you know, the first thing to recognize obviously is that government can only do so much. I mean, these are a lot of sort of, you know, tech libertarians are talking about and some of them don't even, you know, want the government to be as involved as they are. But in terms of the support that's there, most people would say, okay, they've sort of done the things that they want them to do and, you know, there's not that much more that government can do. And you talk about Nortel, you talk about BlackBerry, which, you know, admittedly is having something of a renaissance right now, but both were once high flyers that crashed. And I'm wondering how much those names came right. up when you were talking to these Yeah, stars. well, I mean, BlackBerry's renaissance today doesn't necessarily bring it anywhere close to the $80 billion, you know, world-beating device company that it was, a totally different company today, and Nortel as well in its day. And, and as Canadians, these are sort of the names we think about when we think about tech. And what we really want to build now is a world where we don't just have one BlackBerry and one Nortel, but you know, five, six, seven other companies that maybe aren't quite as big, but are multi-billion dollar companies that people around the world can recognize. And that's really the challenge that's before the tech sector right now. And you also touch on Canadian culture and some of the folks that you talk to uh, feeling perhaps that Canadians are too risk averse. Sometimes mm -hmm. they sell too early, often to Americans of right. all people. Um, is that changing at all? Definitely. I mean, I think that those sort of stereotypes have kind of been present in how outsiders see Canadians and also how Canadians see themselves for a while. There's always been people who have bucked that trend and proven it to be um, untrue. But at this point, I think there's sort of definitely a, a time where people are looking more to Silicon Valley culture, where you build your own thing, you hold on to it, you want to change the world, you don't necessarily want to just sell and go buy a cottage with the money. Um, and that's definitely infused itself into Canada's tech culture right now.